Uh, last time we talked about a register, uh, which, uh, which is a general name that uh, we use to indicate quite a general family of components whose, uh, with the property that the current of that component and the voltage of that component, uh, together they satisfy a relation, and that relation is described by a curve on the uh, ID, uh, current voltage plane. Okay. Today, uh, today's lecture we will begin with talking about a very special yet uh, very important member of that general family, namely linear time invariant. So LTI, so this is the abbreviation that we use for linear time invariant. Linear time invariant raises. So let's define what it is, and then we will uh, figure out certain important properties of that component. Yeah. First of all, the schematic representation is uh, like this. Okay. Suppose this indicates its voltage, V of T, and then we obey passive sign convention. If this is the voltage, therefore, this has to be the current, the current of that component. And somewhere around that spring-like shape, you see a number, okay? and that number is usually as a symbol indicated by R. Okay. Now this R is a constant, and it relates voltage to current through this linear identity. Okay, voltage is always at all times proportional to current of this component. And that proportional constant is called the resistance of linear time invariant resistor. And this is coming from or is directly on the okay. Now, the, uh, if you draw that relation on the ID plane clearly, this is what we have. V zero I, this is the origin and the relation is linear, it's a line that passes through the origin and the slope, if I is vertical axis and V is the horizontal axis, the slope is so-called conductance of the erase. Okay, and G equals 1 over D resistance. Okay. Now, again, usually, okay, in practical uh, applications, R is positive, but this definition doesn't care about the sign of R, so R can be positive or negative. But important here is that R is a constant. Now that R, as we said, has a special name, so resistance it's called, and it's measured in volt per amps, and that has a special name, that means has a special name, it's called ohms. Okay. ohms. And we use the capital omega, the Greek letter, to, uh, to indicate that unit. And G, the slope here, which is 1 over R, is called the conductance of the resistor. Okay. And it's measured in either Siemens, capital okay, S, or Moles. Okay. So ohm, mole. Okay. And the, uh, the symbol that we use to indicate mole is, is a upside down omega. Okay. 
So this is the question before. Mongoose or Siemens, they both mean the same thing. Now, an LTI resistor is both voltage and current control. Okay, that is. It's clear from this picture, you choose any voltage from minus infinity to plus infinity, and for that particular voltage that always corresponds a unique current, okay, is an operating point. And then likewise, you choose any current from minus infinity to plus infinity, and for that particular current there always exists a unique voltage uh, in the on this on this curve. Therefore, an LTI resistor is both current and voltage controlled. Except for the following two cases. Okay. Current controlled for all resistance values for all R except R equals zero. Okay, R equals zero means that this slope is infinity. Or R equals infinity. R equals infinity means that the slope is zero. So either if uh, the slope is infinity or zero, then it's clearly not both voltage and current. Okay. R equals zero and R equals infinity. Now that R equals infinity, same as G equals zero, the conductance is zero. Okay. Now, <coughs> Let's briefly talk about the R equals zero case. This corresponds to a zero resistance uh, component. Okay, it's a perfect conductor. And if this is the ID plane, then all the operating points must lie on this vertical line. Okay. So what does that curve tell us? It tells us that we choose any current whatsoever for all those currents that correspond to voltage. And that voltage is always zero. Okay, therefore, clearly it's current control, but not voltage control. Because the only voltage that's possible for this case is, since R equals zero, no matter what R you choose, the product is always zero, therefore the voltage has to be zero at all times. Okay, so V of T, equals zero, regardless of the current. And this case has a special symbol and a special name. Okay. Plus minus V equals zero. And here, this is the current I of T, and it can be empty. Meaning that by looking at the voltage, which is zero, you cannot determine what the current is. Current can be empty. This case is called is called short circuit. And let's also quickly talk about the other extreme case, R equals infinity or G equals zero case. That is, no matter what voltage you choose, the current is always zero. I of t equals zero. Okay. And the symbol for this 
case is a line that's broken in the middle, okay? And we call it open circuit. Here, <coughs> this is voltage V of T. Now that the current is, <coughs> excuse me, the current is necessarily zero at all times, and the voltage can be anything. This can be anything means that you cannot determine voltage by looking at the current because current is always zero. It gives us no information whatsoever regarding the voltage of this component. In this case, the other extreme, the first extreme was the short circuit case where the voltage is always zero. Now we have the opposite case where the current is always zero. And this case is called open circuit. Now, uh, let's talk about the power of an LTI resistor. Here is what we have. Okay. Remember that power of any two terminal component is simply the product of current and voltage. Okay. Therefore, P equals VI. This is our general formula. And now, if we apply this formula to LTI, Resistor, then what we have is V times V over R because we can express current in terms of voltage as such. Therefore, we can write 1 over R V squared, that's the current, or G, which is conductance, conductance times square of the voltage, that's power. Or equally, we can express here, we express current in terms of voltage, but we could have expressed voltage in terms of current. If you do that, what we have is Ri is voltage times the current, okay? And what we have is Ri squared. That's another way of expressing the power. Okay. Therefore, for an LTI resistor, P equals 1 over R V squared. Or equivalently R I squared. Okay, for an LTI resistor. Okay. So that's all there is to uh, the important component LTI resistor. Now, what we're going to continue with is we're going to talk about also two other very important players in circuit theory, namely capacitor and inductor. We will first give the general definitions and then we will concentrate on the LTI in your time in the case. resistor or current source or voltage source, two terminal element and it has a very remarkable property which is for instance not shared by the resistor, it can store charge and being able to store charge makes it also able to store energy. Okay? It's a very important property. Uh, that can store charge. The charge, let's call it Q, it stores, has some relation to the voltage that appears across its terminals. Okay, if you have such an element where it can store charge and charge is somehow related to the voltage or voltage is related to the charge that's being stored, that element can be considered under the general title of a capacitor. Okay. 
and the voltage that could be across its terminals satisfy a relation described by a curve on the QB plane. Okay. So the symbol that we use to indicate uh, the capacitor in our drawings is those two uh, parallel lines. Okay. These are the terminals. And then suppose that this is voltage, and then this is the current of the component or capacitor, and somewhere close to that symbol, you place the charge, the charge of the capacitor Q. Okay. Example V Q. Suppose that we have component that can store charge and the relation between the charge that is stores and voltage that appears across its terminals satisfy this linear relation and then that would be a capacitor. In fact, this is a very special type of capacitor which we will study most. It's called LTI capacitor linear time memory. But by no means this definition is restricted to, to this case. Okay. You can perfectly imagine a case where the charge and voltage dependence is described by such an unusual uh, shape. Still, according to our definition, that's a capacitor. And the physical actual component looks, at least in the idealist, idealized case, follows to have uh, two parallel plates And between them, sandwiched, is an insulating material. Okay. And the charge can be stored on the plates. And if you have charge that's Q okay, on one of the plates, then on the other plate we have minus Q. So that the total gives us zero. But when we say the charge of a capacitor, we don't add this plus that because that's always zero. When we, mean, when we use the word charge of a capacitor, we need uh, uh, the charge on one of the reference plates. Okay. So this is the current. And that's the current. Mm -hmm. okay. And here, this the voltage that appears across two plates or across the terminals of the physical device. This is between the plates we have insulating material. Okay. And these are conducting plates. Okay. Now let's also try to introduce current to the picture, to the description. We have not that current, by definition, is rate of change of charge, D of ET, QT, okay. This is directly coming from the definition of current. It has nothing to do, it's not peculiar, it's not special, 
to the uh, to the capacitor case. Okay. So definition of car. Okay. Hence the charge stored on capacitor can be computed if you have the information regarding the current passing through it. Namely, Q of T equals QT0. This is the initial charge, T0 being the initial time, plus the integral of current passing through the capacitor. Now, this is the general definition of a capacitor. Now, we will concentrate on the special member of that family, okay? namely LTI capacitor. Linear time invariant capacitor, alpha capacitor, namely Q of T is always proportional to the voltage, and that proportional constant we indicate by capital letter C. Okay, so if this is a relation, that is, if you can find a constant C such that charge and voltage of your component always satisfy this relation, then your component is an alpha capacitor. Now, this constant has a special name. It's called the capacitance of the capacitor. Okay. Constant named capacitance. Okay. And it's measured in okay. capital S. Now, starting from this relation, let's try to obtain a relation in terms of current and voltage, because usually that's what we like to work with, current and voltage. So that's the next question that we will try to figure out. What's the ID relation for a linear time invariant capacitor? Okay. So we start from the definition of current, which is here, I of T equals D DT QT. Okay, so that's the definition of current. And now we want to obtain the I relation for alpha capacitor. For alpha capacitor, we can express charge in terms of voltage as such. So we have D over DT. is C V T C is the capacitance constant therefore this gives us C D V T D T okay. therefore the current of an alpha capacitor is always proportional not to voltage because if it were proportional to voltage then it would be a resistor but it's proportional to the rate of change of voltage. Okay. C dVT over dT. This is the terminal equation for an LTI capacitor. For LTI capacitor. Now, how about what if we wanted voltage to appear on the left hand side? 
So let's do that also. charge plus T0 to Ti tau E tau. Okay. This yields V of T equals QT0 over C and QT0 over C is VT0, initial charge, uh, excuse me, initial voltage of the capacitor. T0 plus 1 over the capacitance, and then you integrate the current, I tau beta. So here is another equivalent uh, current voltage representation for the delta capacitance equal to this. Okay. And here V T0 is the initial. Voltage of capacitor. Okay. Now, now we will talk. Now we will talk about briefly uh, inductor, in, in particular alpha inductor. But before that, let's put uh, those thermal equations of the capacitor into use in very simple uh, toy examples. Source which we can play with, let's say, which we can uh, manipulate, and then to it we connect a capacitor. Okay? What we want is we want to charge this capacitor to some particular voltage that we want. Okay? This is VST, voltage of independent voltage source. This is voltage of the capacitor, but also its voltage of independent voltage source because they two are held. And here this is an LTI capacitor, therefore it should have a capacitance C. And this thing that connects this component to that component is the wire. Okay. Now we ST0 that is initially capacitor or this independent voltage source is at let's say 10 volts. Okay, so initially our capacitor is at 10 volts. And the capacitance is 1 micro let's say. Now the story is such that from 10 volts we want to raise the, uh, the voltage of the capacitor to 12 volts. Okay. Now clearly this, is, this does whatever we want it to do. We can immediately switch this 10 volts to 12 volts and then capacitor voltage must jump to 12 volts immediately because those two things are parallel. But we cannot do that immediately because that would require arbitrary large amounts of current and that is not allowed because we are considering that physical and meaningful case that this fire can carry only a certain amount of current. Okay? So we have to make the voltage raise gradually. Okay, this is the story. Suppose The maximum current, current the wire can carry is 
is forty milliamps, and our goal is. raise the voltage from the initial 10 volts to final 12 volts to 12 volts without damaging the wire that wire has some physical capacity. What is the minimum time required? Okay, because we want to do this as fast as possible. Time required for open trays. Let's try to answer this question and the answer lies in this very question that we will do. So let me try to squeeze a picture here. C1 microfarads. Okay, so this is. Initially, we were at 10 volts, okay, we ST volt, and then we want to raise the voltage to 12 volts, okay, at some future time. Okay. Now, we want to do this as fast as possible, therefore, we want this delta T to be as small as possible, and the question asks. What's the smallest delta T possible? Okay, while obeying this constraint that we don't want to break, we don't want to break the wire. Okay. So here is the answer. Okay, we have V final t0 plus delta t. What's t final? We don't know what t final is because that's what we're trying to figure out. In fact, what we're trying to figure out is delta t. Okay, equals v initial t0. By the way, t0 is arbitrary. Here we can take if you want it to be zero. Plus one over c times the integral of the current passing through the capacitor. T0, T0 plus delta T. And then here we have the cup, D, D, T. Now, here is the current of the capacitor. This is 12 volts. This is 10 volt. Okay. And this is the current of the capacitor. Now, because we want this delta T to be as small as possible, we want to use, we should use uh, the current that's as large as possible without breaking the wire, and that current is 40 milliamps. Okay, so here we should be working with the maximum allowable current I and X. This is 10 volts, this 1 over C is 1 over 10 to the minus 6 farads, okay, because capacitance is 1 microfarad, and this I and X is. 40 10 to the minus 3x because it's 40 milliamps. Okay. And then putting everything to the equation, we have 12 equals 10 plus, since this is constant, the maximum current is constant, so it's very straightforward integrated. It's simply imx times delta t, okay. which is 40 times 10 to the minus 3 delta t, and we have over 10 to the minus 6 thousand. Okay. 
Now, if you solve this equation for delta t, you obtain delta t equals 5 times 10 to the minus 5. Okay. Seconds, okay, and that equals 50 microseconds. So this is the fastest, this is the smallest time that you can do this voltage raise. If you want, if you attempt to raise voltage, let's say in 40 microseconds, then somewhere between, you have to exceed this uh, maximum allowed in car, and then at that point, the wire will break. Here's another very short example that uses the other terminal equation. Okay. Now, consider Again, in this very primitive uh, circuit connection, here we have remember this symbol is the symbol that we use for constant uh, voltage source, namely battery. Suppose that here we have a battery of the volts and it's connected to a capacitor as shown. Plus minus V. This is a linear time invariant capacitor with capacitance C. And the question asks, what's this card at any time? Note that this is a battery, so that means the voltage that it provides is 12 volts at all times. Okay, it's constant. Okay, that means this voltage is constant. And then whenever the voltage is constant for an LTL capacitor, it means that the current, it means that it's not charging, okay, its charge is fixed. Because constant voltage means constant charge, constant Q, and constant Q means, by definition of current, zero current. So I equals C dV dt. So that's the term of the equation for the LTI capacitor. And dV dt, because the voltage is constant, is zero. Therefore, the current must be zero in this. Simple situation. Therefore, the capacitor behaves as one of the components that we've already seen under constant voltage. And that component that we've seen is open circuit as open circuit under constant voltage, and constant voltage has another name, we sometimes call it DC voltage, under DC voltage. Okay. So here we use this term equation, I equals C D E D T. And in the previous example, we use the integral formation of the, uh, the term of the equation for our capacitor. Now, before we move on to the inductor, the next component, let's also talk about power of uh, an LTI capacitor. And more importantly, let's also talk about the property which was not shared by the resistor. Okay? The property of storing energy which capacitors are capable of. Let's talk about the power of LTI capacitors. We start from the definition of power for any two terminal component, which is the product of voltage and current. We have IRT, VT. Then, for an LTI capacitor, we can express the current in terms of rate of change of voltage, namely C dVT dT. 
Bt times Bt. Therefore, this is power represented in terms of voltage for an anti Okay, So let's put that in a box. P of T equals C Vt times rate of change of voltage dVt dVt. For LTI capacity. Now from power we will move on to energy, stored energy. <coughs> okay, this makes sense for passive capacitors only. This definition makes sense. Passive capacitors only. And, and for an LTI capacitor, it means it's passive if its capacitance is positive. Okay. Are we considering the positive capacitance case? Now, work or energy is the integral of power. Okay? So we start from that definition and stored energy is such that you start integrating from minus infinity. Okay? P tau D tau. Okay? Now, this Using this relation that we just obtained, this integral can be written as V at minus infinity V at time T C V D B. Okay, we use this P T D T equals C V D B, and that's what we did. We replaced this with C V D B. Okay. And that equals what? Now, by definition, this voltage at minus infinity is zero. Okay, this equals zero by definition. By the way, this minus infinity, you can just take any past, any time, any instant in the past for which capacitor is totally uncharged. That is, it has zero voltage. Okay. So by definition, this is zero, and then what we have is one half C V T squared. Okay. So therefore, at any given time, the stored energy at an RTI capacitor is proportional to the square of the voltage. An exact formula equals is that energy equals one half C times V squared. Okay. Hence, energy stored in an LTI capacitor. is W, or sometimes we can use E, equals one half C, and then square root of two voltage. Or you can use, you can express this also in terms of the charge, because voltage and charge are related to one another through a linear relation. We can write this also as one half, one over C, Q squared. Q is the charge of the capacitor. Okay, so that's the stored energy. Okay. By the way, sometimes you may hear people using the, uh, the term energy transfer during an interval. Energy transfer during the interval T0 to T, let's say T is the initial time, T is the final time later than T0 regarding the capacitor. It simply means, okay, delta V simply means the difference between stored energies at the final time and the initial time. Okay, WT0. And this is the stored energy, therefore, that equals one half C, and then you take the difference of square root voltages, VT squared minus VT0 squared. And how to interpret? 
design, suppose that you compute energy transfer for some capacitor in some circuit and for some uh, interval. And this is your computer. If you find that this delta W is negative, so that means during that interval, on the average, capacitor supplied the circuit that is part of by energy. If, on the other hand, this delta W is positive, so that means during that interval, on the average, capacitor uh, has collected and has absorbed energy from the circuit that is connected to. Okay. Now we will continue with inductor uh, in our next lecture.